I doing? Yes, okay, it's fine. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. I have chat with my phone. It's fucking 16 o'clock, baby. We're gonna turn off the starting soon. I want everyone to be quiet now. Turn off your phone if you need to take notes. Please don't do it on a computer because I will be able to hear your keyboards. It'll be very loud and obnoxious and I won't like it. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's time to start a presentation. This is when I'm realizing that I probably should have practiced like what I wanted to say. But instead, I just wrote a bunch of shit on a PowerPoint and we're just going to have to figure it out. I'm really hoping that records. Wait, how... Can I fucking open OBS? There we go. Okay, everything's fine. Never mind. We're good. We're good. We're good. So, hello, class. Welcome to my presentation <laughs> about <laughs> casting Team Fortress 2 like your heroes, Sea Bear, Ox and Beta, uh, Turbo Tabs, Commander X. This is Salamancer. You will know him, maybe. Uh, get a whale sideshow brand. Oh fuck. Wait, hold on. Yeah <laughs> I didn't want it to be delivered like that, but if you want to cast can you please consider becoming a producer instead? Um, Because here's the thing right? Uh, wait, why is it not fucking changing slides? We desperately need EU producers right now bum is fucking shaking and crying every single week because we don't have anyone to produce This PowerPoint has more frames than TFTV when Beats is producing. He's a fucking toaster. We need help Please just message TumTum -tum on discord Thank you very much All right, so who am I who am I giving this presentation qualified enough to be talking about casting. My name is Wandum or Wan or Wandum. I don't know. This is a photo of me. Um, you can see I didn't make my bed because I was lazy and sick. Uh, you could also see I have a stuffed uh, orangutan and a map of the world from Ikea um, in my room. I also closed my door. And you can also see a charger plugged in next to the door, which I used to charge a Kindle. Um... Bro, Kaya is back. That's badass. Okay. I am a ETF-12 Division 2 soldier. You know what? I'm actually not going to look at chat because I need this recording to be slightly serious, I think. Um, which means that I play Division 2 in Europe. If you need to convert that to a different division in whatever region you play, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I'm not the top division. I'm not the lowest. I'm sort of middle, upper middle of the pack, I think. Um, I have two years of casting experience for these various organizations. You can see them here. Um, <clears throat> none of these are RGL, uh, because Banny hates, hates me, uh, personally, deeply, vindictively, uh, despises me actually. Um, but, but besides that, I've cast for pretty much everyone. I've done online events. I've done seasons. I've never gotten higher than I think the fifth best caster in Europe. But that doesn't matter, because I'm talking anyway. So, I think the first question you have to ask yourself, um, when you say that you want to be a caster, is you sort of, in your journey of finding yourself in, in the casting world, is you have to ask them the question of what the fuck is a caster even in the first place? Because without that, you don't even know what you're trying to become. And I think sort of the most generally understood definition of what a caster is sort of the general gist is that it's a guy who screams at a video game kind of like this clip right here that i'm going to show you Right, it's kind of like that. That's sort of the general understanding of what is a caster. It's a guy that screams really loudly when Faker presses R on his keyboard. And he's the world's best gamer and he presses a singular keyboard button. Um, sort of what he does. Um, but I think a sort of more general definition is that as a caster, my opinion, you are primarily a storyteller you're an old fucking man who sat down and you tell you're teaching you're telling the story 
of the game to your grandkids, right? Like you're telling a story about the game on the screen to the audience. The audience is fucking stupid and cannot decide what's on the screen and they will understand it a lot better if an old guy like you tells them what the fuck is going on. That's your role. It's to be the old guy in the armchair who sits them down and tells them a funny story about the birds and the bees. Probably not that, but like, you know, TF2. Um, I can't see my next slide because it's blank. Okay, there we go. Next, I think a very important question you have to ask is, uh, when you're sort of beginning on this journey, you also have to sort of identify with yourself why you even want to do it in the first place, right? And sort of on a personal anecdote, I can give you a very clear, defined, singular moment in time where I realized that I wanted to be a TF2 caster, or at least I started considering it, right? This is what planted the idea in my brain. And I can show you it right now. We're going to actually, we're actually going to watch what made me want to start TF2 casting. Who could get clutching it out again? This is brutal with the Uber sauce. Like half blue did it on Snake Water last. Half blue's done it two times in one series. There is 20 seconds left. There may be time for one last push. They just need to all just go straight on the point. Sneakies are up. The off passes are out. There is 10 seconds to go. Stark is going to go in high. He's going to. Oh wow! They go in. They get it. They get the run. One second on the clock. Oh my days. Now, okay, I'll tell you this right now. I mean no disrespect to Kermit or to Warha, yeah. They are great people. They have done amazing things for the community. But this fucking finals cast of I-63 is the worst fucking thing I've ever had to listen to. Holy fucking shit, is it hot steaming garbage. This is such a cool fucking moment in TF2 history. And they fucking took it out. They printed out picture frame by frame. And they fucking shat piss shit and came on it all at the same time. What the fuck did they do to this shit? I watched this and I was like, there's no fucking way. I've never casted a single moment in my life and I could do this a million times times better than this piece of shit. What the fuck is this? They're not even fucking commentating. Listen to Warha yeah right now. There may be time for one last This person. is fine. Look at his reaction to the drop. Listen to this. Look the hype. Oh wow. The singular moment of Warha yeah just going, oh wow, to the most hype drop tf2 in like fucking years single-handedly pretty much planted the seed in my skull that i wanted to cast so basically for me i wrote this out a little more formally we don't have to read this is a little bit cringe but this is sort of what i want i wanted when i started this i wanted to be able to give sort of hype moments in the game sort of like the commentary they deserve because i felt like they just weren't getting it um, but you know, that's for me, right? Like there's, there are many other reasons for why you would want to cast. Maybe it's something like this. You know, I'm fucking stupid. I don't know what's going on. You're watching the stream, getting angry that Wandam is talking about the wrong things and is saying wrong shit. And you're like, Jesus fucking Christ, someone take him off the mic or I'm going to shoot myself. And maybe you're also thinking, if I was on here, I'd be able to tell the audience what's actually going on instead of random spending prof- propaganda and misinformation. Perfectly valid reason to start fucking casting. Another one, you just like attention. This is sort of a thing for me as I really do like attention, which is also another reason why I started it, because I realized I'm not going to get any attention by actually playing TF2. Or, you know, um, there's a German guy... Um, who has a loaded armed weapon, and it's actually cold right now, um, at the back of my, I can feel it's chill. Or, you know, there's, there's somebody, you know, your friend told you that you might be good at it. This is the story of a lot of TF2 casters, me included, actually. The reason I actually got my shit together and messaged dumb asking to cast is because AMS, AMS, was like, bro, you should cast. And I was like, no, that's fucking stupid. I said to him, and then I immediately messaged dumb, um, 
And it's also what happened to Bren, who's now actually a successful caster in, in other videos, video games. But I do think, before you start casting, I think there's, a, there's sort of a checklist. And in, 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 as there is to anything in life, there are some prerequisites for sort of what you have to be able to do before you start casting. And number one is you have to be good at speaking the language that you want to cast in. I wrote off your choice. You don't, you obviously don't have to cast English. If you're sitting there and being like, dude, fuck, I just want to cast in fucking German. Just cast in German, bro. Like, but you have to be good at speaking German. I'm shit at German. I can say nothing in German. I should not cast German. I can speak Spanish conversationally. If I tried to cast that game, cast anything in Spanish, it would be fucking miserable because I simply do not have the vocabulary in the language, right? Like, I am much more confident in English than I am in pretty much any other language, including Danish which is a topic onto itself that I won't get into, but you need to be confident in what in in the in the shit you're saying or you will sound nervous and it will suck and you'll get in your own head. And that will be bad too. Number 2 of prerequisites. I consider the lang being good at speaking a language to be the most important, but really not that far behind is game knowledge. You have to know what is going on in the game or you just won't be able to cast properly. Everything will be out of whack. You'll be saying wrong shit. You'll be looking at the wrong shit. So you'll be talking about the wrong shit. You won't be able to match the flow of the game. Everything will be garbage. Everyone will call you out in chat. No one will listen to you. Your reputation's in the garbage. Everything sucks. It's bad. It's so fucking hard to come back from somebody, from your reputation being not like smart enough at the game to cast. Really difficult to recover because that just becomes your reputation. Having good game knowledge is fucking essential. Number three is you need casting essentials in your custom folder. Um, I actually don't even remember how I installed this because it was two years ago, but I'm pretty sure I downloaded a thing from a GitHub somewhere. I looked it up on TFTV and I just fucking copy pasted it into my custom folder and now it works. So let's go through these prerequisites one by one. Number one is you have to be good at speaking, right? You have to be able and be comfortable speaking for extended periods of time kind of like what I'm doing right now. I was always the kid, like the, you know, in school, there's always the one or two kids in class that don't get really upset and stressed about having to do a presentation in front of the whole class. I'm one of those kids for every reason. Like, obviously, if I, if I have nothing prepared, then obviously I'm nervous as shit and I fucking hate it. But if I've prepared like a little speech or whatever i like going up and performing in front of people i find that fun in in a similar vein you have to be comfortable in front of an audience sure most of the time when you're casting you're not actually in front of anyone but if you're anything like me you will have the stream open you will have viewers the view account open which is fucking stupid by the way don't do that you'll have the view account open and you will have chat open somewhere, which again is, is a bad idea, but, but it probably will happen anyway. I continue to do it to this day. So you should, like, ultimately, like, you should not be afraid of public speaking. Obviously, this is something that could be trained if you are right now scared of speaking in front of a loud, large group of people. Maybe, honestly, casting is a really good way to get around those fears, to get that practice in, because, yeah, sure, they, like, ultimately, people that are watching are still just numbers on a screen, unless you're casting out of land, which, let me fucking tell you, boys, if you go outside, you won't be casting fucking land. <laughs> no one's casting out of land at the moment. Um... Right, so you're just doing it in front of numbers. But uh, it's it's a decent way to train. It, it can obviously be trained, both of these, but it's like, it's still a little bit of effort, right? Another thing that you really, I need to stress this, I should have worded this a bit different, but you need to be comfortable with people making fun of your accent. I think this is especially true for anyone that is not either A, British, or B, American. And the reason for this is that any time, and, and I know this being, being European, English is my second language, you are so much more aware of what you sound like when you're speaking the language. For so many people in the world, they are not comfortable with speaking English because they are uncomfortable with, like, with their accents. If you're from France, chances are you're gonna have a French accent. If you are from Denmark, you might probably honestly sound like I'm talking right now. And that's completely okay, but you have to remember that this is the fucking internet and the people in the chat will call you a potato mouth. Like, even, honestly, genuinely, I have this fucked up amalgam of whatever the fuck this accent is. 
people still call me out for it in chat, even though, it, like, compared to most Danish people, like, the accent is pretty good, right? If you are British, people will make fun of you for being British, 100%. If you are Scottish, people will make fun of you for being Scottish. If you are Spanish, people will rightfully call you out for being Spanish. If you are American, the whole chat will make fun of you for being a hamburger. I think the main way, honestly, besides actually speaking, to get better at, at speaking, is to listen to other people cast. And, and I wrote cast here, but really I probably should have just written speaking instead. Because it is just general, like, watch people perform, like, different shit. If you want, like, listen to people, like, I don't know. Like, obviously, watch casts of video games. Another thing is, like, something I do sometimes is I watch stand-up comedians, which also helps you with comedic timing, which is very important a lot of the time in casts. I remember... This is aimed at TF2 people, but this applies to any game. I don't watch that much TF2 casted outside of the games I cast myself. Most of the inspiration from other casters that I take from is League of Legends and Counter-Strike. You will notice that the only, the only TF2 clip that I will show to demonstrate points in this whole presentation is that Warha Yeah and Kermit clip from the beginning. All of the other demonstrations of points that I'm trying to make with video clips will be from other games. And that's because while casting different games requires different shit, it's still like roughly the same skill set that you're developing. You can transition as a caster between games Provided that you have the game knowledge to sort of transition and cast properly, right? So number two is you have good game knowledge. Now, this might sound scary if you don't already have good game knowledge. And you might also be like, what does good game knowledge mean? And th that's a question unto itself. Like, like, what is enough to be able to cast. In my opinion, at least, there's a guy in the TF2 community that demonstrates perfectly that you don't have to be Premiership to be a TF2 caster, right? Like, you don't have to be one of the, like, I don't know how many people are in Prem, it's like 6 times 8, which is like a number, it's like 42. You don't have to be one of the 42 best players in Europe to commentate, because most people in chat will, will not be able to tell a difference, right? But at least, in my opinion, even if you are not Prem, I feel a little bit like a little bit of an asshole saying this, you should still at least be top mid. Now, that sounds harsh. If you are standing from it right now as like a lowest, like an open player, top mid might seem like a hard mountain to climb. But I mean this genuinely. I was top mid at age 15, and I am a fucking idiot. If I, as a 15-year-old, can get to the middle division in Europe, you can too. And the reason I say this is that when you are casting, knowledge of the flow and the context of a game is required, absolutely required, if you want to be able to tell the story of what is actually happening in the game. If you... And to me, at least, the limit, like, sort of a lower bar for what you need to be able to understand what is going off on enough to be able to dilute it and tell it to the audience is around top mid Division 2-ish. Um, bonus point, of course, here being that you, you would ideally tell the audience something that they don't know already. Now, what this... Now, this depends entirely on who the audience consists of. Remember that you're casting TF2, and when you're casting TF2, you're casting sixes, which means that if you have a thousand, two thousand hours of game knowledge and how to pub on CP snake water, or, or rather, like, like payload bad water, for example, is what I meant. If you have a bunch of hours experience pubbing, it will not translate to sixes because it is a different game. You need experience with the actual game you are casting. Right. That being said, most of the audience, I have no statistics on this, but in my head, most people in Twitch chat actually watching the cast themselves will be about mid, which is why if you're like top mid division two, you will probably be able to teach them a few things or like at least verbalize, verbalize things, like verbalize thoughts that people have in their heads for them, right?
that maybe people are thinking something, they're feeling it, but they haven't quite like put it to words. You're the person that is explaining and putting the words and putting things to words for them, right? Now, of course, I'm saying this from a perspective of like, you should be able to play TF2 at a top mid level, which like, I honestly, genuinely, I don't think is unrealistic. If you're serious about really wanting to be a caster, you should hit this level. Like, but but of course, if you really like don't want to play, if you have fucking Cater's hands or whatever, like you can, like there are plenty of examples of just like watching a fuck ton of demos, which, which is like a, a totally like in a way, it's a totally valid way to go about it, right? Sort of, at least for me, the most obvious way to get to the point where I have enough game knowledge is by actually playing the game. That is the way that I make it bearable for myself. I can barely sit through an hour and a half of demos even now if I fucking try, right? But a really good example of someone who does not play any video games, I'm pretty sure, but has still, like, been at the top of the, of the field in terms of game knowledge is a guy like this. This guy's name is Monte Cristo. You might know him for sometimes being on podcasts with Thorin and, like, laughing while Thorin says outrageous, stupid incel shit. And he just kind of sits there in the back and laughs. But he's also, at multiple points in his career, been, like, literally the analyst in multiple different video games and is pretty much never played them but only just studied demos and it's a totally valid way of going about this i would mention dumtum as an example because i do consider the fact or i, I do consider dumtum having good enough game knowledge to be able to cast despite the fact that he's nemo never played demo man above like the low division right like dumtum couldn't hit a pipe if he tried but he's seen like a billion demos so he will be able to to have good game knowledge enough to cast anyway number three is have casting essentials in your custom folder i don't know why the other t-rex is not loading there's a really cool powerpoint feature that lets you load 3d models and i thought they were funny but unfortunately only one of the t-rexes is loading right now so you're just gonna have to look at one of the t-rexes load like running all around remember of course oh there we go they all started right like fuck <laughs> remember to add minus and secure to your launch options when you're trying to make casting essentials work um, remember to remove it when you're also, like, actually trying to play TF2 again afterwards. Alright. So, a question that you will hear asked a billion, million, billion times when you are getting into casting, or, like, immediately, is are you color, or are you a play-by-play -play caster? And let's start out defining what these terms mean, and we'll start out by defining a play-by-play, -play. um... And I actually, honestly, I think the best way to do it is I'll just fucking show you an example. Um, here we go. This is, once again, not TF2. As you can see, these are real racing cars. But I think this is genuinely one of the best examples I have of what good play-by-play -play is. Alright, so that is my big example of what play-by-play -play is, right? This is, this is the guy, it's, I'm pointing to my screen as if you can fucking see that I'm pointing, is this guy, his name is David Crofty, you might know him as, as the guy who was screaming at, at toy race cars, um, for, I think, like, Sky TV, I don't know English broad broadcast channels, um, they are what's hap they, they are the, the casters that tell you what is happening on the screen, sort of play-by-play, play. whenever there's a big moment, there's a big fight happening, it's the fucking white guy in a blue shirt screaming at the fucking screen, telling you, like, reading the kill feed, basically, right, now, play-by-play play requires more, sort of, casting know-how, you have to be a little bit better at talking, to do play-by-play -play because you just have to be a rap god sometimes. Maybe. You don't have to be a rap god. But you it, it requires a little bit more finesse in how you speak. You have to be able to bring stuff up and bring stuff down again, like depending on what you want to do. I did the hand motion, but then I also didn't do it with my voice properly. So you'll just have to imagine what I meant. Um But but still, like remember, like you're trying to you're trying to match the energy of the game, and in order to do that, and to be able to look at a situation and tell what is happening and what is important for you to say, because you can only say one thing at one time, right? Is that you still need game knowledge. You, a lot of, I think a trap of what a lot of people fall into is that they say, oh, I want to get into casting. I don't know much about the game, so I'm just going to play by play, right? Because if I just play by play, I won't actually need to know what's going on. I'll just have the analyst guy next to me 
telling me all the stuff I need to know. But if you don't know what to talk about, you're just gonna be you're just gonna be like white noise, right? Like you're not actually giving anything to the audience. You're just gonna be a guy screaming. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't really like it when people scream at me. Like, like there are very rare situations where people screaming at me is like fun, <laughs> unless it's like very specific circumstances, right? Like, like play by play is is the is the loud screaming guy. It is sort of he's the front guy. If you consider, if you look at a casting panel, if you think of big casters, you will probably for big moments you will remember the play by play because they are the guys screaming their heads off, saying funny shit. Now. We'll go to the other type of caster, the color cast commentator, the color caster, whatever the fuck. Here we have another example from- <gasps> Look at it, it's the fucking race car, he's back again! Wow, that was classic example of someone adding color. A color commentator is a guy like this guy, this guy's name is Martin Brundle, he's a former- I don't know if he's a world champion, he's a Formula- He's a Formula One driver, he's very old now, but I think he used to drive cars like- 30 years ago, whatever the fuck, before I was born, probably, um, but, but the color cast is typically the expert, right, the color is the person that's providing more context to what's going on, you know, sort of being like, why was a play made, was it good, was it bad, why was it good, why was it bad, what should teams do next, what should they do before, etc, 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 the color guy is the guy, is the smart one, Typically, when you see pro players transition from being professional players and going into commentary, they will typically gravitate towards the color, towards the color role because they will have a lot more information and knowledge. And honestly, it's a little bit easier because you can lean heavier on your game knowledge. That, of course, means that game knowledge is more exceptional or more essential, right? But it's it's it requires a little bit less technique and finesse. Obviously, the skill ceiling is just as high, potentially even higher than a play-by-play. -play, but 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 the floor is a lot lower because you're allowed to be the guy that's just talking. You don't have to add like extra flavor, extra pizzazz. You can just kind of speak normally, and if what you're saying is interesting enough, you're fine. All right. And then you're sitting there and you're all confused. You're like, oh, fuck, what do I pick? What do I pick? What do I be? I don't know. I don't know. Do I want to be a color? Do I want to be, do, do I want to, do I want to be play by play? What do I do? I can speak fast, but I can also, I know about the game. You know, I'm like, uh, I don't know. Maybe you're like Bumfrey. You're like, oh, I play Medic and Div 1. I'm good. I can be both. And it's like, yeah, exactly. You just fucking do both. Like, be both. Especially for games like Team Fortress 2. I think I'll get into this a little bit in a second. But have the versatility. Because it is so fucking nice to be able to fill both roles, right? Like, even if you are a blanking here, even if you are like a diehard play-by-play, -play, having the ability to fill and just do analysis, do color, if the, com if the color commentator, I don't know, just fucking like despawns from the world and like, I don't know, counters like a glitch and just fucking dies. Like, you need to be able to fill out, right? Be able to do both because it's nice to have the flexibility and a built understanding of what your partner is going to do regardless of whatever happens, right? We'll get into that in a second. This transition is fucking long, by the way. I don't know why I use this one. It's so stupid. So let's talk about this. I've mentioned this a few times. It's game flow. And my understanding of this, and I apologize for this in advance because this sound, this is going to sound super fucking nutty, but then again, you're here to learning how to fucking speak about video games. So, like, don't, like, just fucking go with me, okay? So, any game, any good game will flow like a sine wave. And what I mean by this is something like this will happen. You'll have a bottom and then excitement is going to build up and something cool has happened. And then you're going to bring it back down again. You're going to bring the energy back down because a play has happened. But then suddenly a new play starts building up and you're sort of building up and there's a hype moment. And then you're diffusing it again because the energy is going to go down. Teams finish pushing and now they're going to build up and they're going to start pushing again. Do you see what I fucking mean? That was very fast paced. I could have done that a little bit slower because it was hard to do that. But that's what I mean. In TF2, you'll go to a mid fight. You'll start really high intensity and then after the mid fight there's gonna be a break because there's gonna be a lot of people dead so there won't be a lot of fighting happen and that's the time when the analyst comes along and sort of you sort of pick up the pieces a little bit and you're talking about what the fuck happened and then eventually you 
like a push will happen again like eventually if you're not in Europe or like if you're playing with a bani config the push will fucking happen immediately and just fucking curve is just a flat line at the top and then like everything's gone to shit right but like you know what I mean like the game flows like a sine wave and oh fuck uh how do we go back there we go and as a as a caster you should be able to match the flow of the cast with the flow of the game right like obviously it gives viewers crazy amounts of whiplash if there is an alamus screaming his head off and like going super super fast while the team is just sitting there spamming a choke point like no one like it will just be weird like you you can talk about those things but you do it slowly if there is a big push happening for example of <laughs> uber drop in the finals of an i series event of na versus eu you don't sit there and go oh wow you start screaming because it's a really hype play. And this is an important part. And I sort of added this is that a color commentator should be able to pick up from up high. And I also mean the opposite, right? As a color commentator, don't sit there and be like, if I'm a color, I don't have to ever go high intensity. I can just always talk normally like I'm a normal human being. No, you have to sometimes you have to be able to pick it up from up top. I'll show you what I mean in this really cool League of Legends clip. Fuck it. Do you guys not love League of Legends? This is from 2016. Nothing's fucking changed. I'm a child. Listen to the... Listen to the... This is a tri-cast, which means there's three casts. There's one play-by-play, -play, the guy that you just listen to talk to, and then there's two analysts. There's two analysts. Listen to the two analysts right now. And sort of pay attention to where the energy level is. Pick off on bang. Rocks doesn't actually have to stop pushing right now. The energy is so decently high right now already. Together. You could see, you you could hear that right. Like the analyst, while Jet is speaking, is pretty high. He's already like the intensity is pretty high up. And then listen to Crepo. Listen to him scream. You heard it before because I paused it badly. Now they can delay the recalls. The oh, look at the oh. get teleport. That's it. That's all he says. But he brings the energy up, and now you can hear everyone starts fucking screaming right because you brought it up at the top. Yeah. The crowd's going fucking crazy because that was sick. That was crazy. I know it's hard to make League of Legends look interesting, but this was fucking hype. Right. So basically what we have to what we have to watch here is that yes, there's analysts, there's color commentary going on, but it's super high intensity in the moment because it's a fucking like this was crazy. Like, the, So this is the context for this game is it's the semifinals of the World Championship in 2016 between the two favorites for the tournament because the League of Legends format fucking sucks. So you never have the two best teams of the tournament in the finals. They always play in like the fucking quarterfinals or whatever the fuck. Um, and, and it's a really fucking intense game. And this fucking guy clutches a crazy, like, arrow and, like, stuns a guy who's trying to go back and, like, defend the base and the win it. And the analyst, the, 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 the analysts are keeping it super high up. Because you can notice the freak is already yelling. The play-by-play -play is already screaming his fucking head off. If Jack just starts talking normally now, if he just starts fucking telling, like, oh, yeah, they're running into the base, like, whatever, yeah, it was a cool play. And then, like, Crepo, like, fucking starts screaming, the arrow, the arrow, arrow! Like, it, like, like, it kind of works, but it feels weird right like you you get you get stun locked a little bit all right stop i don't know what i wanted here i was gonna fucking oh yeah the opposite right okay so the other thing is i just talked about this the colors you have to be willing to go super high intensity as a color commentator you have to be willing to scream a little bit as well you have to be able you have to be willing to sort of add some background on some ad living we'll talk about ad living a little bit later but another thing as a play-by-play Sometimes, brother, you gotta stop fucking yelling and screaming and talking like a fucking animal. Because a lot of the time, especially in TF2, stalemates will happen and you should just talk a little slower. Because the gameplay pace will be slow. It's completely okay as a play-by-play -play, to just talk at a normal pace sometimes. Maybe even a little bit slower than normal. Because sometimes the game is just fucking slow. And... Reflecting that, it's good. 
right? So take an example like this from Counter-Strike. Thank fucking God it's not League of the Legends anymore. Can you believe it? The fucking Danish bias. Holy shit, who is this guy? Listen to Machine cast this. So, so he actually shoots the AWP in the back of the head without anyone looking. Gets the AWP and kills the guy CT. Ah, uh, yeah, ah, uh, yeah. Oh, oh my god, he's knifed him, and he's gotten away with the AWP. I'm starting to get nervous. There's no way, there's no way. Caden, you can't win Pro League like this. You can't win Pro League like this. No way. Axiles left, 40 seconds, and the bomb's on A. Take your time, son. You're about to make the play of your career. Now, Axel's on ramp. He's got 30 seconds to think this one through. A knife kill? It's so tense. He's thinking about ramp. Jumps Tore him. Fast, gets the info. He just has to hit this shot, and he's done it for Heroic. The leader calling well above his years, clearing corners. Oh, no! Cannon! You're an animal! Heroic, you've done it! Right? What you saw there is machine restraining himself. He doesn't have to call a billion things per second because this play was never gonna fucking happen, right? This is the most outlandish fucking 1v4 you've ever seen in your entire fucking life. The guy got a knife kill on a no scope with a fucking wall bang and then he like fucking like flick headshot another guy. Like that fucking never happens, um, right? But it's still like, like you have to be able to be willing to slow it down. Contrast is essential. You cannot have people getting excited about you when you start yelling and screaming if you've never been quiet because that will they'll just think that the default mode is you going fucking monkey and just going to be like Ooh! like at everything that's happening when sometimes maybe the game is fucking slow. If for example, here's the thing. I do this always. If it's my turn to speak and there is a sniper on either team, I will go on the sniper POV. And if the sniper is going for a shot, you go on his camera and you slow it right down. And you go like, oh yeah, fucking like I A Gink is on sniper. He's trying to go for a shot. But you do it slowly because it matches the gameplay pace of a sniper, which most of the time is fucking boring. Because you're just staring at a corner, right? <laughs> like 99% like of sniper gameplay is fucking staring at walls and shit, which is fine. But you bring down the pace because then afterwards I can bring it back up. And it's the process of bringing up the pace of your cast that gets people excited, right? It's the, it's the feeling of being lifted that you need. The feeling of lift. I didn't write that down. I should have. I should have practiced this a couple of times. So I knew what the fuck I was going to say. But remember also. Here's why. Another big reason for why you should be able to do both. Color and play by play. Is that sometimes things just get messy. Clean handoffs to your color or your play by play. Sometimes just can't fucking happen. Because you'll be mid sentence or whatever. And then like. Like, fuck it, something will happen, and you'll just have to do the other part, and that's fine. Especially, especially when you're casting cough maps. Cough maps flow like dog shit. They are so obnoxious, because you never get a fucking break. Try do any analysis on a cough map. It is impossible, because the game pace is lightning speed brutally impossible right and then you still don't want it to just be one guy rap godding for 30 minutes right because nobody has a lung capacity to do that you're gonna want to like hand off to your other caster but you're just gonna hand off for some more play-by-play -play. like realistically when you're casting cough there's just gonna be two people taking turns to do play-by-play -play. and that's completely like it's it's obviously not fine but it's better than nothing <laughs> Right, like product is probably one of the only maps where you'd probably just fucking solo cast it as play by play, and it's like you would just like you kill yourself doing it, but like it'd probably be better, right? But here's another thing, another example of high intensity as a color caster. I actually forgot where I wanted to go with this, but it's another beautiful League of Legends clip. Guys, I fucking love League of Legends. Did I tell you how much I love League of Legends, by the way? Have you seen the new show Arcane on Netflix? Holy shit. I actually haven't. Let's watch this clip. I actually forgot what this is. is I think it's what it... Okay, whatever. Yeah, okay. It's the same clip we saw already, but this time it's in English. Uh, listen listen to the color casters right now again. Like, listen to what they do. Listen, they, they do something. They do something critical. And I want you to just think about what happens here. Bang is hiding, he's coming! Bang, look at 
come in. Here comes your initiation. They're in three. Oh, oh, oh my God. Dr. Shockwave will find them all. And SKT, with a hell of a response, will take down four. My point with this, what I wanted you guys to notice, and I hope you did, is if I can fucking find the clip. Wait, hold on. Oh, it's like here, right? Listen to the fucking, as this crazy fucking play happens, is listen to the color casters in the background. Why does it fucking go to the beginning? I hate PowerPoint. Whoa! They literally did that. Like the color casters in the background, they just start going fucking mental, right? Remember, as a color caster, you can add so much by just letting out an excited yelp, right? Like you're allowed to talk over your co caster sometime, right? It's fine. You can do that. If your playbook, if your fucking color is dumb dumb and keeps talking about mid Highlander for like 30 minutes at a time, you're allowed to interrupt them to talk about the important shit, which is what is happening in the game, right? As a color, Something that is essential to do is while your play-by-play -play is talking and rap guarding or whatever the fuck he's doing, you can sort of add extra little bits. You can ad lib. Basically, is what you're doing. You're ad libbing, right? Is is you will see me a lot of the time. I don't think I do this very well. I think honestly, the most of the time when I do it, it's it's just a little bit cringe. I go like ooh or like whoa or something like that, something. And then like depending on like how hype it actually is, I might like actually scream. Um, <laughs> but like most of the time, like game like TF2 games are like if, if it's like a week five game between like bomb two prem teams, like most of the time game, like things aren't that exciting, right? Like you need to remember again to match match with expectations of like of like importance as well but remember like you're allowed to to speak while your co while your co-caster is speaking right but leave it to around like three words because you don't want to break your play-by-play's -play flow right and just making more noise is more than enough to sort of highlight the big moment right if you want a fucking amazing example of someone who's so fucking good at doing this listen to henry g cast with sadokist like counter-strike basically watch henry g cast counter-strike he's so good at just making excited noises that aren't even words but you can use these sort of max three words to highlight something going on. We saw it earlier in the arrow clip, right? All Crepo says is we're going to go back here. Wait, how do I do this? Uh, we're going to go all the way back here. All this guy says. He just says, look at the arrow. That's it. He went one word overboard, in my opinion, honestly. He could have just said the arrow. That's it. That's all he says, but he screams it fucking loud so everyone in the fucking world knows that that is the thing they have to look at right now. As the as the color, you can perfectly direct the attention of where people should look. You can direct sort of, you know, like you can, you, you show people where they should point their eyeballs. And in my opinion, you the best person at doing this is Henry G. So let's sort of break this down a little bit. Um, I did my best uh, paint drawing diagram. And I this is super pretentious and really fucking cringe. But I think it's worth just sort of putting in there and as sort of a... I think it's a sort of discussion worth having. It's sort of the anatomy of what happens in a big moment. You can just kind of view this as like a, like a cutout of like... A, like a single little bit of like the sine wave that is the flow of the game that you're casting. Right, so at the beginning you have sort of the grounded setup, right? This is where you and where the color and the play-by-play, -play, they're sort of talking shop, they're talking basic shit, or like they're either discussing something that's happened or they're already like, or they're sort of beginning to talk about what is going to happen next. Then you get sort of a bigger, sort of like a rising build-up. I don't know what the fucking call it. You get some build-up, right? This is when the casters start catching on to something's coming up. Typically in TF2, this would be like just like going into a mid fight. You're setting up what you expect the team to do, etc., etc. Or it would be like, let's say there's a sniper on one team about to go for a peek onto the enemy medic, for example, like peeking into lust. Or there's a team just like in general, it's about to push, right? 
this is when the analyst or all the play-by-play or probably both is sort of setting up like what is about to happen usually it's just the analyst because this timing isn't that long it's usually about like 20 20 you have like max 20 seconds and then it's a massive moment this is when the play-by-play goes fucking monkey mode or like not necessarily even goes monkey mode because remember once again Something that I honestly just realized that I didn't talk about enough. Another thing about matching the flow of the game is that most games aren't that hype. <laughs> Remember, if you are casting on the B stream of like a fucking of like the top team in Prem versus the bottom team in Prem, and they one of the top players got like a 3k, it's not that exciting unless the top player is like unless it's a f- crazy 3k right like you're matching the energy of the game which means that this massive moment of cheers and screams is relative to how big the game actually is you go a lot crazy on a map three on like the golden cap of a map three than you do in like the beginning of like a game one and like a week four matchup and then afterwards you sort of have the reaction of what happened and this is again where the color commentator sort of picks it up and he picks it up high right and he sort of diffuses with an analysis of what happened what just happened in the mid push how did the sniper get the medic and how did they push off of that because remember honestly if especially if you're casting tf2 sniping happens too quick it happens instantaneously building it up is hard to do you can do it with a sniper but something like an airshot for example is most of the time it's just build up because the the spike in energy is so high it just feels like whiplash and you as a human being don't have the emotional capacity at least i don't to start screaming at an airshot unless it is absolutely massive this is only like a minus 100 i'm not gonna go fucking crazy for it unless it's like the finals of i-65 and it's like a drop on the enemy medic right like which we've seen happen obviously then you go crazy but most of the time you don't you just fucking sit there and say oh yeah nice ass shot right okay because remember this too much hype is just as jarring as not enough i was sitting there flaming waha yeah for not sounding excited at all at a final but just the same if you're sat there for like a let's take this season I don't know what game is happening, but let's say you're casting the Germans versus the Backyard Bullies. And the Germans are getting 5050 rolled by the Backyard Bullies. Uh, the Backyard Bullies, for context, are probably going to get second place in Prem this season. It's just going to be weird, right? People are also going to be like, why is this guy so fucking hype about this matchup that doesn't mean anything? This team's getting rolled. It's not exciting. And it won't be, right? <laughs> you have to match the expectations. As you're saying, yes, correctly. Bren started out just fucking hyping everything. I have this clear memory in my head of Bren when he started casting. And he just said, look at this fast bomb! And, and obviously a little bit better and not like weird like I just did it. Because I'm not in like casting mode. But he sort of hyped out just Drac doing a rollout. Which, like a rollout isn't sick. It's just a fucking rollout. <laughs> right? So like, like, like match the energy. And this is obviously hard, right? Like, this is a matter of taste. (laughs) What you'll find most of the time is that I am too much for a lot of people, too intense for a lot of people. They think I'm fucking crazy. (laughs) But a way, a good way to match this, do you like that transition? It's practice, right? Gotta fucking practice. Gotta practice. Gotta practice. Practice. Practice, 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 practice. 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 Don't practice, you practice. It's fucking practice. It's the only way you're gonna get better. The only way you're gonna be number one, or like number six in my case. Practice, 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 practice. Right. But you might ask yourself the question how the fuck do I practice? Dum Tum isn't putting me on any of the streams. I can't get any practice in. Well, Here's one really good way. Is listen to your self-casting. This is fucking painful. I hate doing this. It is the worst. It is... If you've ever tried demo reviewing yourself in any game, that already sucks. Listening to your own voice and noticing all the shit that you say and how badly you say it sucks so much, but it helps you a fuck ton. Obviously, you will always be your own worst critic, but it's so helpful in terms of getting better. Right. Another thing, listen to other casters and commentators. Again, don't limit yourself to one game. Watch multiple games. Something I realized this year watching Formula 1 is that David Crofty's fucking good at commentating. And there's a lot of stuff to be learned, right? 
It's the same. I watch a lot of League of Legends. The casters in League of Legends, I'll say it right now, they're a lot better than TF2 casters. And they're also paid. Like, it's their job, so it makes sense, right? But there's a lot to learn from different games. Obviously, the flow of the game isn't there, but there's a lot of other stuff, like how they articulate themselves, the pace that they talk at, the things that they say, they choose to highlight how they sort of structure their cast is really important. Here's another thing that I actually learned. This is a this is a secret technique that was passed down to me by none other than the grandfather of TF2 Turbo Tab himself, is sing karaoke. Which 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 might sound a little jarring, but honestly it fucking works. <laughs> like just sing some fucking songs. If you wanna if you're like, oh wow, like lucky it's like fucking saying a thousand words per minute, how does he do it? How does he get that? A way to practice is just like find like an M M song. Like, the songs where Eminem, like, raps really fast, and just learn those songs. I'd use that as a way to practice, to speak really quickly. So, it's powerful shit. It's really good. Now, obviously, I usually do this when I'm drunk. Um, which maybe, maybe being drunk isn't, <laughs> when you're drunk isn't the best time to sort of practice karaoke, but you know. But also, another thing is you, <laughs> another way to practice is a fucking cast, man. And don't be afraid to cast the same game multiple times, or the same play even. Don't be afraid if you casted a mid-fight in a practice session, and you didn't like how you do it, don't be afraid to just rewind and fucking do it again. Obviously, it's not the same thing, because all of a sudden, you know what to expect way more than you did before. Obviously, this is where game knowledge comes in, you should sort of have a basic idea of what's going to happen in the game before it happens, right? But... But casting is also a lot of sort of diluting what's on the screen, right? This instant and what's going to happen in a second. And it makes it so much easier when you already know what is going to happen. It's sort of, it's it's like casting on training reels, right? It's it's like putting the training wheels on on a, on a game you've already fucking watched. You know what's going to happen. You know what to look and what to do. It's perfectly valid. What if you turn on your voice chat and cast your every move in a pub, um... And most of the people in the pub will probably just mute you. But, um, I mean, it might be a way. Maybe you could get some feedback. I don't fucking know. I've never done that. I don't use voice chat in TF2. It's, uh, it invites uh, strange people into my life that I don't want. So let's talk a little bit about... Whoa, I like that transition. It was very fast. It was snappy. Like, pew, pew, pew. You know, let's talk about precast preparation. This is something I admittedly don't do that much. Um, because it's fucking homework. <laughs> and we all know how we feel about homework. Homework fucking sucks. <laughs> right? This is ideally where you're interested in the game. You kind of want to know anyway. It's so, like, the homework isn't as bad. It's like, you know when you're, like, in uni or whatever, and you're, like, it's, like, a subject you actually like. So you, like, kind of, like, you don't want to do the homework, but then you start doing the homework, and it's actually not that bad. It's, like, decently fun. Like, that's hopefully what this should be. But the questions you should be asking yourself when you're preparing for a cast before you start doing it is shit like which teams are playing. This is the most important. What are the names of the two teams that are playing? Another one is who are, who are the players on those teams? Are there any rivalries between these players, between these teams? What do these teams and players play like? What should we expect coming into the game? What are their motivations? Why are they playing? <laughs> right why are, they, why are they trying to get better are they trying to win like what's going on like do they just want to fucking get a paycheck i don't fucking know like does this mean looking at historical matches yeah it can expectations what do you expect from all of these things you should be able to tell give the viewer some sort of an expectation of what should, they should expect before the game like this is going, if, if you know you have a good game, you need to be able to tell them. If I have backyard bullies versus evil guys, or like, I don't know, like, like if we take a more recent, like, LAN example, if we have the finals of Froyotech versus G6, you should be able to make a match like that exciting. The real, uh, is being able to make a shitty match exciting, which we'll get into in a second, but all of this shit, oh, fuck, I didn't realize my scroll wheel could do that. It's just set up for the story of the game that you're about to cast, right? This is all the pre-shit. This is all, like, the first 15 pages. Like, before the game actually goes in, you sort of run through all of these with your co cast and you sort of set up an expectation, like, what is going to happen. It's the beginning of the story. And it's super important. Another thing you have to remember to do, another part of doing homework that I found helps a lot, is ask the good players for their opinions. I wrote pro here in quotation marks because in TF2, we don't have pro players. We just have fucking... 
people that pay invite leagues and then fucking like cope their way into believing that they're actually making money when they've spent like four years paying rgl to play fucking tf2 right like but ask pro players for their opinions and then don't be afraid to throw them under the bus when they're wrong because <laughs> all you do then is you just get a free opinion and if you mention that you're like oh i don't know i fucking asked banny like how long like how to win mid on process and then you like give you're like oh well yeah like banny says do this and banny has a lot more authority in the game than you do right authority is nice and if you can quote a pro player fucking do it and then always you can always be like yeah i don't fucking say that as a pro player if banny's fucking mid shot shit then you're like yeah banny's a fucking idiot i always knew it i always said it it's the final point i'm pretty sure this is the final point and i think this is also really fucking important as well it's something i've been thinking about a lot more recently is sort of finding your voice and this comes a little bit later to be honest because there's a lot of stuff you can do to just be a cut out dry like caster right but you have to ask your question ask yourself the question of what makes you different from anybody else what makes you different from this random white guy i found when i googled the white guy in blue shirt on google and put that into google image and i found this guy and he looks really boring right you have to be able to not be boring personality is fucking essential right if people don't f like if people just forget you they won't like you they won't be like oh wow i fucking like i can't wait to like watch dumb tum stream because you know dumb tum we all know has the personality of a fucking soggy french fry pro tip don't be bold very true but also, a part of this is, I think, something that you'll realize very quickly, right, is, is that you'll watch people on camera, and you'll realize that these guys are really bubbly, they have big personalities, whatever the fuck. What you also realize is that most people aren't like that. They don't have massive, really loud personalities. Most of the time, people are pretty fucking chill. But what you also need to realize is that most people play themselves up for the camera, and that's completely okay. The way that I am right now on the microphone it's not like how i am normally on a day-to-day -day basis right the wandom you see on stream is not fucking like i don't know like 2 p.m wandom who's just fucking sat there like watching a youtube video i'm way more relaxed i'm i'm not like i am on camera that much but uh, there's still despite that the sort of core identity to who i am that i sort of exaggerate a little bit become a little bit of a personality when i'm on stream and you can do this to various extents depending on how much it's necessary as long as it's like consistent and this is so much easier if you base this personality off of who you actually are because it adds so much more authenticity to the act that you're putting on but but reminder it is an act for me, if for instance, it's very much an act 90% of the time. Because honestly, I'm not that excited about a lot of things. But I play it up for the camera. And I make it work. Another thing that you have to remember in this day and age, I know there's a lot of Zoomers, is it's completely okay to be cringe. If your personality is you're that guy, when you go into the fucking stream, everyone, like, there are, not everyone. If it's everyone, maybe there's a little bit more of a problem. But if there's a de if there's like a chunk of people in the community that you think you're fucking cringe, that's completely fine. If they're fucking posting about you, they're still fucking talking about you. If like I know for a fact, there's a couple of people. Whenever I'm on a stream, they start posting mad shit in chat. But it's great because they're watching the stream. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> for me it makes no difference if there's some guy sat in chat constantly fucking flaming me because i sound like an idiot and i don't know anything about the game or if it's just a guy like posting pog chips it's the same it's the same viewership there's arguably even more engagement from the guy who's like fucking telling me to never play tf2 again and uninstall and fucking quit and whatever the fuck else right like like, ultimately, it sucks. It really fucking sucks. It's so fucking annoying. Because you will encounter people that you have never met, you have never talked to, but they just fucking hate you. And you're like, what did I do to these people? They, they're just automatically incredibly hostile to me. And unfortunately, the only solution you have, which is the worst fucking solution in the world, is to just be like, yeah, it's the internet. What can you do? There will just be random 18-year-old kids with egos 
uh, <laughs> that they have over being like good at a video game that was made in 2007 that no one fucking plays has been abandoned by its developers and all of the good players and all the good talent so now they've just naturally flowed to the top of the fucking pool because they're the only fucking pieces of shit left in this community right and they'll sit there and flame you for not being good enough for their imaginary kids video game right like just ignore them it's fine you're good enough as long as it's not everyone flaming you it's okay to be cringe and with that i think that was like an hour long i'm not actually sure yeah you know, pretty much perfectly an hour i'm gonna open the floor up to some questions so if you have questions i can see i have a banging chat right now 10 whole viewers apparently ask away with questions i'll give this like um, if there's no questions posted, I will just end the stream because I forgot to bring water and I'm really thirsty. And I also uh, don't want to talk anymore. But if you have a question, ask me right now. Otherwise, um, add me on Steam or like on DM me on Twitter or something. Fucking get in contact. I didn't add my Steam, but but like it's it's there. It's on the internet. It's not. I'm not hard to find. <laughs>